Marconi's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along. When you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Whiskey Neat. I am dying. You're not going to open with a cough, right? Okay, keep the cough in. Uh, I have been, and I kind of explained this at the beginning, but I, I inhaled some insulation in my lungs, and I uh, have been, I'm not sick, although my voice is definitely more sexy. I've been struggling to um, <clears throat> to breathe, right, let alone drink. So, um, and hold on, this looks good. All right, so... Uh, welcome to this week's episode of Whiskey Neat, Spirited Conversations with Interesting People. I am your host, Christopher Hart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I sat down today. There is something that is quite common in the whiskey community known as a bottle share. <clears throat> it's where you get together a group, sometimes 10 people. Everyone brings their own set of bottles. Just fun stuff to try. And you just kind of you sip. You sip everything. I want to try this. I want to try that. I want to learn about this. I want to learn about that. And today we had a bottle share, bottle share episode with uh, Mike Salopek of NASA and Todd Grube of No One Cares. And we uh, just kind of talked through a few things. We tried the new uh, HBS Balcones <clears throat> and we play a game. So I had this phenomenal idea of for a game that was basically like truth or dare to play with some of the comedians that come on. Um, ask them a question that there's no way they'd want to answer. And if they don't answer, then they drink. And if they, it, it's a fun game, right? So we had Todd and Mike whip up some questions that are pretty confrontational, I'll say. And uh, we play a quick game. While we're tasting through some things, I will say <clears throat> I brought on this bottle. This bottle I bought a year ago. I just realized it's backwards. There you go. I bought it a year ago, I think. Uh, Black, I'm a, I've been a fan of Black Adder for probably f- four years, five years. Black Adder is an independent bottler um, that has bottled some incredible stuff. And I'm particularly fond of their raw cask series. They do a raw cask series in which they leave, which I'm going to show you. I haven't actually gotten up during an intro. I'm going to get up during an intro to show you guys. And I know for those who are listening can't see this but essentially what they do is they leave the barrel of char in the bottle and you can't really see it they leave the barrel of char in the bottle now a uh, good friend uh, big fan of the show Alex Coffin hey buddy uh, we've had a recent discussion about this subject on what it actually adds I like the aesthetics I like a straight from the barrel product and if I want to add water I'd, I'd like to do it myself uh, but, you know, a snow globe, as I said in our chat, a snow globe isn't a snow globe if there's no snow in the globe. You know what I mean? So I prefer barrel char, right? Uh, but Black Adder does a raw cask series. They, they bottle rums. They bottle peated whiskey. They bottle, I mean, they bottle everything. They're, they're such a fantastic offering. And, of course, they are sponsors of the show, which I'll get to the reads in a minute. And, of course, Balconies is a sponsor. And Tomatin is not a sponsor. But I wanted to give them another shout-out. I, I just, I have been exploring their their recent releases this port cask 14 year old and i've just been such a fan tomatin is one of the few single malt scotch producers out there that you can still get a really really inexpensive um single malt scotch with a beautiful age statement for you know how much 14 year old bourbon goes for i mean glen morangy the quinta ruban 14 year old i believe it's port casks now uh, 45 bucks, 14 years old. Bourbon that's 14 years old, you're looking at 150 plus. It's ridiculous. So um, let's get to one last thing. I had trouble saying it on the show, but this month's edition of Texas Monthly, there is a fantastic article that yours truly got to contribute to. Uh, they, they, cut it, they cut out the part that I contributed to. 
But uh, they also left in another part. I got to provide my they, – they did a whole article piece on how Texas whiskey has boomed. And, um, of course, I connected them with Travis Whitmire of Houston, who's a phenomenal guy making great whiskey, uh, and with uh, Mike Cameron of, of Devil's River, who's been on the show. So they got to contribute, and then I got to do a little piece on what I feel showcases the diversity and what you can find – and whiskey in Texas. So in that article is a little subsection where I list my f- top five favorite um, Texas whiskeys that kind of showcase what Texas can really do. Definitely check it out. Uh, this week's show is, as always, sponsored by Trelano Distill Artists and Spirits, leader in premium artisan products like Bunahaben, Deanston, Lechegg, Tobermory, Baines, Black Bottle, and, of course, Scottish Leader. You can pick up the entire line at your local liquor store, or if you are a retailer, reach out to your United Wine and Spirits rep. And last but not least, Whiskey Neat is supported by the Inspired Spirits at Glass Rev Imports and Amroot Distilleries. We love featuring Amroot Whiskey's on the show. Amroot crafts single malt whiskey to the exacting standards of scotch. If you need proof, well, at this year's proof awards, Amroot Fusion received double gold. 96 points and a blind tasting by 30 industry judges. Amroot appreciates that the great state of Texas has become the number one consumer of this elixir of life, which is what the word Amroot means in America. So that covers all of our sponsors. Um... Today was a fun show. I sit down with longtime friends, Todd Grube and Mike Salopek. They are probably some of my closest whiskey friends. We just have a simple bottle share. We talk about things that are going on. And uh, I really hope nothing bad comes from this episode. We'll see how the next week goes. We've got some exciting episodes coming up. Um, yeah, without further ado, cheers. First off, I, w- I do want to preface this by saying that we have been, and I put this up online, we've been filling our house with insulate. We have an older home, uh, and I for sure inhaled cellulose into my lungs. So I've been coughing. It may I may cough on the episode. I'll rely on Jack to drop the volume or something. I don't know. I don't know how you want to handle it. I'll just try not to do it directly in the mic. But guys, thanks so much for coming back on. Mike, yeah. longtime friend. We talk daily. Todd, buddy, this is what, your fifth appearance? Not sure. Not sure? Something like that. All right. Well, let's get started. I figured we would, you know, it's a, it's a lot of work planning every episode. And this week, I j- I'm just so tired. And I thought I would love nothing more than to have two good friends on and us drink. That sounds awesome. So yeah. let's, and I actually brought a few fun things. I brought our two balcony picks, which I don't think either one of you guys got no, to taste yet. I'm Can't excited. Wait to try so it. one's peated and the next rumble cask. One is, um, it's got some smokiness to it, but it's not from Pete. Hmm. So we call that one obviously Smoky Mary. Todd designed the labels uh, with, with Alex Elrod from Balconies. I also brought, um, you guys know Lincoln Road, they did a couple of picks. Rum picks with Rolling Fork Spirits, no finer spirits. So we uh, got Sweet. their Jamaican in. I figured I haven't oh, wow. tasted it. It's yeah. open, but I haven't tasted it yet. Awesome. Wow. I met with them a couple nights ago. I also brought Black Adder. I've talked about Amroot. They are a sponsor on the show. Black Adder, Black Adder is also a sponsor, but I don't get to drink Black Adder enough. I'm excited And this to try is their that. Raw Cask series, and Mass. it's literally just... Whoa. I mean, that's the most I've ever seen. That's, that's the most insane. char I've ever seen. And I know camera guys can't see this, but uh, I also brought a 1950s high proof uh, rum called. I don't. Am I allowed to say? That? I don't know, man. That is. <laughs> it just means that, black. Yeah. Yeah. Rum Negrito. Not in German though, which is the rest of the bottle writing on the bottle. Original Caribbean rum, and it's 54. Uh, percent So it's from the 1970s. I figure we can open that. Wow. A little vintage rum tasting. Yeah, that sounds yeah. awesome. And, of course, you guys brought some stuff, too, right? I mean, not anything that cool. I have uh, older Blanton's from 91 that I got. Older Blanton's is what made Blanton's. Really, really good, actually. amazing. It's way different tasting than the current stuff. Richer. It's even darker, too. I did a couple side-by-sides in my house. I brought an old Jack Daniels that I actually got from my wife's grandmother's house. It uh, flooded a couple of months ago, and they were cleaning stuff out when they were remodeling, and they found this. must have been her grandfather's. I think it's from the... 
early nineties. Sure. And, uh, it tastes pretty, it tastes different than the current stuff. And then I have a Weller store pick from a place, uh, up where my sister lives. Our so. f- uh, foolproofs are about to hit Texas very soon. I mean, I know that they full, hit, I know the full, yeah, but the not picks, the picks. The picks uh, yeah. The picks. So we're waiting on Morgan's pick and a few other, uh, foolproof picks, which uh, what are they going for in secondary? I saw like 300, 350. I've seen something. the regular ones go for 350. So yeah. So picks, picks. I'm not sure where the market f- has fallen, but it started at like 700. 700. I remember <laughs> Holy seeing, cow. Uh, yeah. That's remember seeing for, for Weller pick. Antique, basically. Yeah. For Weller yeah. Pick. Yeah. In the past, slightly like proof. 150. Slightly proof. 111 hey, or something. You got to catch them all, man. You got to have that Weller vertical, you know? So. Yeah. Well, let's jump into it. Where do you want to start? Oh, man. We do. We I feel like wanna? this is going to wreck. This might want I to feel like a few later. things on this table are going to wreck us. Yeah. Uh, so I, I brought this one for you, Chris. This was the McAllen cast yeah, strength. I, that, I'm a huge oh, that's, fan. That is delicious. Yeah. I've told the go, story the how we lost them as a sponsor on the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, language is important. So, all right, let's give it a little pour. I'm going to try actually one of the balcones. Okay. Yeah, me too. So, and you guys missed that trip. Do you yeah. want some of this? Oh, no, you I'm want to try this one. Do bac- okay. So, yeah. which one is that? That this is, is the Smoky Mary you said. Yep. That's Smoky Mary. I'll take a touch of that one as well. So they took, you know, people are, which by the way, I would love to, to talk Thanks. about the pre-chip, the Chip Tate era stuff. Yeah. So many people are up on this Chip Tate stuff era. St- when it comes to bourbon, right, people want to talk about older stuff is better. But when it comes to Texas whiskey, the newer stuff, the newer is, stuff is way great. better yeah, than absolutely. when it was first developing. Yeah. And uh, we we whiskey neat is we were blessed enough to get the first ever. Which by the way, I brought with me our rumble cask. Uh, oh. First ever rumble cask picks with balconies. This show got, and we did three versions of it: the standard rumble cask, one Oloroso sherry, and one tequila barrel. And I've got all three of those samples with me today. Wow! Uh, so we have quite a bit to drink. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. I was talking to Wade about the tequila and I told him about the brandy at um, oh, yeah. at uh, Copper and Kings that we looked at and we thought it was just a little too weird. It was, yeah. yeah. Weird, yeah. But it, we, we liked it. It but was We good, weren't but sure yeah. what people would think of it. That'll be interesting to try. I'm really excited to try the sherry one. I'm a huge mm-hmm. sherry scotch fan. Oh, so. for sure. Uh, man, this, so this was the Smoky Lady you said? That Mary. Was Smoky Mary. Smoky Mary. So what they took is, you know, Balcones used to be five gallon barrels. They took a bunch of those five gallon barrels at cast strength, and they threw them into a bigger American oaks uh, American oak barrel, which I think in this case was Old Buffalo Trace. <coughs> Ooh, how was that? Could you hear that? Can't wait to see the uh, online reviews for uh, these, these noises. Coughing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's it's Smoky Mary, as in two R's, like to get married oh, because they, they married, married, the, married barrels. the barrels oh, together. So clever. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so and it's super. I w- I traditionally have not been a huge fan of the single malt. Uh, I find it a bit boring and overwhelming. Um, tr- traditionally, as far as picks go, like we really mm-hmm. wanted something uh, super interesting and bold. Uh, and super of course, bold. the cast strength single malt bold. is very bold. This is also yeah, it, super it's super just bold, full, bursting with flavor. Mm-hmm. And that's the first time you've had it, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's really good. What's the proof on this? It seems they're both high. Right, one. Oh, oh yeah, they're going to be. I think one something. was like. Uh, they're all going to be north of one twenty. Okay. Like one was one thirty six or something. Wow. There's no proof on the bottle either. These mm-hmm. are, haven't made it to market officially. These okay. were um, pulled samples from the distillery. So. And these are going to be spread around through various <laughs> stores throughout. So the one of them only is going to. There's only going to be like fifty bottles that make it to market. Oh right. Um, okay. Another one. Uh, the the. Smoky Mary will be so the peated one's only like fifty bottles. Okay, the Smoky Mary is going to be a bigger yield. That was like one fifty. One or something one like that. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that one will go to Total Wine. Oh, okay. Uh, spread around town. Mm. Yeah, and the labels are fully legal because they, they were put on at the distillery. They're not covering anything, and it's just graphic and content. Oh, yeah, nice. it's uh, club graphics or logos. It's not uh, additional information that right. you have to run by TTB. <laughs> so I guess since it's a Texas distillery and they're more willing to work with you on putting on those labels at the distillery then? Uh, we've <clears throat> talked about many times that the, this wave that we're going through with Texas whiskey where they're just learning to say yes. Yeah. They're willing to jump through hoops. And, I mean, what Iron Root's done for us. Oh, yeah. What Balconies has done for us. They're just they're willing to make these projects work and go above and beyond. And it's something that traditionally most of the big distilleries – all of the big distilleries are not really well, they don't willing need to. to yeah, yeah, they're not willing. To and they're not going to spend the time to do it. I mean, these, guys, right. these 
the Balcones guys put it on themselves. You right. Know, the, the stickers got mailed out there. They put them on and. Well, I mean, it is a it is craft a craft product in yeah. that it's you know much smaller production, so it's a lot of it is done by hand. But it's still anyway, labor right? intensive, so, yeah. you know. Oh yeah, totally, totally. But mm-hmm. I mean, there's more of an opportunity to do it rather than on a big bottling line like it. Oh, I left my glasses in my truck. Do I still look sophisticated? <laughs> no. no, not right. so much. Not at all. <laughs> also, sunburned. Dude, my my daughter has a soccer game. She's playing soccer right now. We were outside at 9 a.m. this past Saturday. And I was outside for 30 minutes. And I got sunburned. At n- oh, at 9 a.m. At 9 I got sunburned. Wow. And and I've been peeling so and white. And I, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, so white. <laughs> I mean, I thought I was bad, but you're definitely way more. Well, dangerous. you forget here when it's not when it's October. That's true too. It's still yeah, yeah. bad. Well, yeah. it, it felt great this weekend. I mean, the weather in Houston's mm-hmm. finally let up. That McAllen cast rank is off the charts. Yeah, yeah, yeah that stuff it's, is so it's, good. it's great. <clears throat> oh man! And I bought that probably six or seven years ago, and then stopped drinking scotch and forgot about it. And that's one of the only ones I have left. And that one they don't, sold they don't make anymore, right? It's no, the they, classic, classic cut classic now, cut yeah. now yeah. which is still good. That's still but good. It's a drop in yeah. proof. And this is the higher end proof of the two that they released previously. This is the one twenty point two. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And then they did like a fifty nine percent. I think the last yeah. classic cut was okay. like fifty six or something. Mm-hmm. They, they dropped it. Significantly. How is the classic cut? It's good. I've yeah. got good. It. I, I mean, like it's, it. you know, for that ninety dollar price range mm-hmm. for high end scotch. I'd rather have the Abuna from Avalauer personally, or even a Farkless one hundred five. But dude, I've been raving about those Deanston. Have you tried those? They're younger, but they're that sixty yeah, the percent. Ca- no, they have a cash strength. They've got some cash strength things since they've been releasing at the sixty dollar price range. Really? Is that what you brought to the meeting the other day? You you had a a sherry finished scotch, I thought. Uh, that I think that might have been the brandy one, but that was also brandy. Okay. Yeah, so they did a they did a Bordeaux finish, a brandy finish, and it's all like super high cash strength. Yeah. Uh, younger scotch, but, right? But in a you know full maturation in a separate you know whatever, and and they're freaking for sixty dollars. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. been my entry back into scotches because it has that little sweetness, and I love right. anything sherry. It's, oh, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, and that's I mean you get a lot of the I mean it's not really close to bourbon, but it's sweeter than yeah. some of the other scotches that are. Available. I'm going to do a little bit of this peated balcony stuff. Yeah, I'm going to do that next. I think. So yeah. this has been really re- well received. Um, I did a, mm. a little private tape. By the way, there's a dump glass in front of you guys. I didn't bring measured pours, but yeah, okay. I brought a. Uh, <clears throat> um, I brought these to a tasting. You know, we talk about how connected the bourbon community is. It always Ooh, blows smoking. on mind when I meet a group of people who have never heard of the online communities at all, and they're like, "Oh what? yeah, I'm a whiskey guy." I'm like, <laughs> "You're a whiskey guy, and you're you're from Houston." You say, "Yeah, I'm Houston." You ever heard of Houston Bourbon Society or Bourbon Hounds? He's like, "No, I never heard of any of these That's things." That's crazy. I'm like. Dude, there's a whole twenty people. It was a it was a thirty. It was a this guy's thirtieth birthday. Uh, I went to this tasting. We poured like six different things, and we talked through how they're mm. made, what they're you know where they came from, and this guy had a good whiskey selection on it, like that he brought with him to to, to this birthday party, and he's from Houston. <clears throat> But had never and, heard and it of, was really a good whiskey selection, not just like I mean, it was a blends, it was a blends and, and eagle. Rare. Well, he he had a blend. I feel like he had an eagle rare. Without being connected to a community or knowing people, you could. I feel like there's a limit uh, to your yeah. knowledge level. Oh wow! Not that it makes you an that expert. That is as all. Pe- it is. It's, it's so smoky. So, so smoky. So he. Um, oh, there's a medicinal note on the. Finish there is. That's it's like really band aids, but not in a bad way. Iodine. Yeah. <clears throat> so he uh, wow. he had a, a collection. That was decent enough to say that I'm a whiskey guy. Okay. Yeah. You could tell. You're only a whiskey guy when you drink Band-Aids and smoke and you're like, Man, yeah, that's delicious. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So that good. is so good. This tastes like uh, like a dirty mop at an old hospital. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> that's like the Corona rum, right? It's like yeah. a tire fire. That ham juice that you brought last time. It's, it's totally garbage a tire water. Fire. <laughs> I will say that one's not my favorite. It, I like trying that with other people just because it's super unique, but I don't. Hey, you I mean usually... you spelled disgusting wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think even Richard Seal has said he's like it. It tastes like that because it's wrong. The Corona, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. It, it, they messed because it's not meant to, to be that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely band aids. Like mm-hmm. that's crazy. Oh, I get mm-hmm. complaints about that. Sorry, two noises. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> hack off mic and. I like that though. That's good. That is. I can very much drink that. I like yeah, the me smoky too. Mary more, especially down a campfire. I tend not like the peated stuff, but that's it's just. Flavor. I didn't bring any water, so you're gonna have to rinse your glass yeah, out with the next drink. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, what? Well, yeah, one bottle should do it. Just enough to rinse 
Whose water is that? It's been here for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some, but it's some it says, great radio right there. The alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, gonna, the alcohol gonna, will kill the germs. That's right. Jamaica yeah. thing. Oh, who's that? Oh, I we'll know just, that We'll is. pour the dump cup on that's the water. I'm doing tomorrow. And then rinse. All right. I'm trying this Jamaican rum. That that funk might rinse out the uh, no, that'll definitely do it. smoke. So what was, where's that one from in Jamaica? Did yeah, yeah. So, so I'll tell you uh, it's Worthy Park. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. I'm what's your, around, wait, like, what's which he, bottle can I waste in this glass? I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Nick's still not watching. No. <laughs> this is a good one, though. But it's the, probably one of the cheapest bottles. Oh, my God. How do people not... How do how is rum still not quite blowing up? Shh. Boom Boo? Because Boom Boo? I, you know bamboo? what? Bamboo? Is it Bamboo? Bamboo? I don't know how to pronounce it. B-U-M-B-U. That's blowing up, though. What is that? It is. It's, it's that not even rum. In a bottle? Oh. It's the one that looks like a pirate's flask, a glass with a big X on the front. Oh. It looks like a crossbones. I think it's called Bumboo. And it has like it's and rum base. A lot of people are finding rum, rum that way because it? they're oh. like, this is the best rum I've ever had. It's not even, it's not even technically rum. rum. Yeah. It's just a bunch of sugar. and. Which may not be worthy part. This might be. Um, Doesn't it say? Uh, no, worthy parts. Money Musk right there? No, no, no. This is Money oh. Musk. Oh, well, okay. I don't think I've had anything from Money Musk. Uh, that I'm aware of, at least. It, it actually, it might uh, be. Valier did one. I think, I think that's um, one, of, one of their, I thought one of their releases this year, I thought was money. Yeah, I think it was. I don't think I tried that one. But to go back to the tasting thing, I mean, that's one of the things that I really enjoy is sitting down and doing a tasting with people who might not be as familiar with it. Sure. And introducing me. I think there's a lot of people are like, oh, man, whiskey's so harsh, or how do you get more flavors sure. out of the burning? And it's kind of fun. I think you have to kind of lead them on a little bit and suggest some flavors, but then usually once you do, people are kind of able to pick up on some of that. And there's obviously, like a, the there's obviously a power of suggestion yeah. as well. It's, it's powerful. It is. As soon as you say – that's why I say when we do tastings or a pick, like don't talk. Oh, right. Wait, wait until we're done because as soon as someone says tastes like butterscotch, then everyone gets butterscotch. Oh, totally. totally. I think – but if you're – if you're not as familiar with drinking straight yeah. spirits or even wine or anything from that matter, you need some kind of help along the way to identify the flavors. And then I think once, you, once you're able to do that, it's a lot easier. It's, it's still, I mean, describing taste is – it's amazing what people can come up yeah. with sometimes. Uh, sure. I sure. did the uh, Old Forest or did an Old, old Factory uh, event where they, they brought some of their ryes, um, both aged and unaged, and they passed around scents. And they didn't tell you what it was, oh, and, and everyone had to guess what it was. And it's amazing how you couldn't guess lemon, or something simple like lavender, Maybe you, or plebeian. We, well, <laughs> so, you know, some of the people got it. Yeah. Uh, but some of them were. It's tough when you have no reference to to start from, and it's right. just a random smell. Yep. Yeah. There's a lot. And it's, it's equally as hard to drink whiskey and then say, "This is what I. This is what it reminds me of." You sure. Have to learn to make that connection. So for those who don't know, Mike is a new dad. That's right. First dad. Yeah. And I saw your wife posted uh, the vaccine thing. Oh, yeah. I, like as I pulled up for this, uh, so your kid got his first uh, round so, of shots? Yeah. So last week he got his first round of shots. And is he autistic yet? Or? No, not yet, thankfully. <laughs> uh, the government is now tracking him. Sure, though, so, you sure. Know. Uh, he's but in the system. He's in the system. No, so uh, we have like a bunch of those because we're nerds and engineers or whatever, and we have a bunch of uh, books that are like ABCs of science. So you so. believe sure. in science, right? So I do you're, believe you're in admitting science. that. Yeah, I am admitting that. So Insulting. surprisingly, the vaccines was in the science book. I mean, sure, come on. Sure. So anyway, government she's, chill over yeah, here. <laughs> you know, Mike works for NASA. I do, that's Jack. Right. We've talked about this before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sorry yeah, for those who that, don't. That's know. true. That's you true. Know, yeah. Audience has grown a little bit. Right. That's right. That's true. That's fair. But. Yeah, so she turned to the You're page where show. V is for vaccines, and my kid just like started crying. Immediately started yeah. screaming. You know what that is? That's that's <laughs> your child trying to convey non consent. Non consent. And vaccines. if you're not asking for consent, <laughs> yeah, I don't want him to die that's from a needle disease. Rape. <laughs> it's needle rape. Poor kid. He did really well, though. Honestly, I sure. cried right as the nurse stuck him, and then after that, he just basically slept. Do you find yourself so. getting emotional at all when you see him break down? Like, oh yeah, like not not the crying of uh, like a whine, but like the heartbroken cry. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that he, always gets me. It, it's tough, man, and you know it's you let that happen. <laughs> yeah, you're a monster. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. Especially yeah, after his vaccines, he did that for a little bit, and. 
anytime he was awake that day, it was just that like he was like whimpering. Sure. Just that, and you're just like, oh man, I feel so bad. But uh, but no, I mean, he it's it's been fun so far. We've been enjoying it. Jessica's doing a great job as a mom. She's sure. cool. She let me come still to home, this. still staying home. Yeah, it's it's awesome. So she works for Exxon, and they give they have a great maternity leave. maternity leave. How so long has she been gone? She they get she gets I think she got 16 weeks standard, and then she's able to take. A, up to two years leave of absence. It's, it won't be. It's not paid. Wow. But she's doing sure. six months before she goes back. Right wow, now, which yeah, is wow. which is great. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's already been like two months. So we're just thinking, like, man, if if this was halfway over, that's crazy because this went by like that when your day is in three hour chunks because the kids <laughs> yeah, schedule or whatever or whatever. Yeah, and it goes by quick. It's crazy. I t- I was able to take a, a couple of weeks off, which was nice. Um, but uh, you know, my my job's pretty flexible as well. You, you gonna have more? I'll probably do some more around the holidays when we have family and Sorry, stuff coming. More in. kids. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, we want at least one more. Sure. Um, we're hoping for a little girl. Uh, we had a boy this time, which right. is great, but it'd be nice to have What's one. What's his of name each. again? Chris. Jacob. Oh, Jacob. Yeah. Jacob. Jacob with a K. Not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who yeah. spells it with that? Yeah. You know, it's funny. I had a meeting with some- <laughs> <laughs> I had a, uh, That's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> for those who don't get that reference, uh, there was someone who rage quit our group the other day <laughs> and specifically fashion. pointed out that I spell a name with a K. And he, like I have any control over how to spell my name. <laughs> who does that? Name? Yeah. He's like, who spell, Who the F spells yeah. it with a K? <laughs> I had a meeting with a supplier last night and uh, they had brought it up. They were like, what happened with this guy? What you, you know, what would you do to piss him off? I was like. I told him to stop being mean to people. You, so you're being completely reasonable. <laughs> yeah. And I, that's why I posted our conversation yeah. is I said, hey, man, like we work pretty hard to get people to not be jerks right. to each other. Uh, we don't see everything, but we try. Don't be a jerk. And, and it hurt his feelings. He, he basically said that he was just stating his opinion, but his opinion was this is stupid on, yeah, he was on 10 different posts. Yeah. He was spamming posts just, just saying this is stupid, yeah. not contributing it's anything. helpful. Super um, helpful. Do you guys want to taste that rumble cask, or do you want to continue the rum train on this black adder? I want to try that. Rim, yeah, that black yeah this money musk is fantastic. This first rum is awesome. That the is nose really is great. good. Yeah, the nose is fantastic on it. All right, I'm gonna shake this up so hopefully get a little tea leaves in your yes. in your pour. Um, so while they're pouring, I'll mention to you guys this month's episode or episode. That's if that's not bias. I don't know what it is. Freudian slip. Uh, of this. Edition of uh, why can't I talk today? What's it called? Texas Monthly. Thank you. This uh, month's edition edition of Texas Monthly just came out, and it features a really really great piece done by a guy named Eric Benson that just uh, that d- did an entire write up on how Texas has evolved in such a short amount of time, and it really really has. And I think a big part of that has been the online community. There are some. Very, very credible big writers like Chuck Cowdery who kind of downplay um, the Facebook world of spirits. But I, I've talked to a lot of distillers in Texas who cannot stop saying that if it wasn't for the Facebook world, the Texas landscape would be completely different. Yeah, I could, I mean, I totally believe that. With what's cool is like, you know, in, in Houston Bourbon Society, there's a lot of people who, you know, are involved in distilling in Texas sure. in the group. So, as a normal consumer, you get to interact with that. You make a connection there, right? Way more personal, yeah. It's way more personal, and you're more willing to support someone that you know personally. more personally. For more sure. open-minded. More to open-minded. Their, yeah. You can see what they're thinking. You could ask them questions, get in their thought process. I mean, everyone knows it's it's a tough thing to go do. I mean, distilling, and then you got to wait X amount of time. You don't know how it's going to turn mm-hmm. out. It's it, and I think people they also appreciate the feedback too if, if they're doing well if they're not yeah. doing well and, so. and that they're not just available but they're actual members you know, right they, yeah. they contribute yeah, they in contribute, kind of like yeah. normal right. like normal members would so I mean this I, this is insane this That's is why, so you, you caught me off guard you were talking and I was thinking about this rum I'm like yeah. this so is, it's, it's crazy it's insinely good oh and I get a ton of butterscotch yeah Werther's butterscotch. original butterscotch candy off of it the only problem is for that 11 year old mm. it's a it's a bit on the High end price wise. Now it's cast strength. Mm-hmm. The color is it, is it because of the all, the all black char that I mean the char it, it definitely green. affects. Yeah, it, it does look green. <laughs> the char definitely affects it. But I've had some of their bottlings that were still uh, that color. Um, it's it, one of the most unique rums I've had, though. It's just, this is fantastic. It uh it has like an herbal mm-hmm. to it at the end too, almost like rye and butterscotch. It's kind of an interesting. The butterscotch is so over. It's like butter, but like yeah, butter melted butter. Hmm. 
It's incredible. I'm getting medicinal on this one as well. And it's such a fun bottle. Yeah, a little, a little bit, bit of on ja- that Jamaican shirt. funk. Yeah, those high esters. So weird, man. Let me see here. That's a lot of char. Still July 2007. Ooh, my tongue's numb. <laughs> 128.4 proof. 11 years old from Money Musk. Is that distillery still active? I know some of them. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I think they're still. Yeah. Okay. Unless I'm missing something. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm no not Doug Carroll or Tyler Martin. Yeah, but I they know might a thing know. or two about rum. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, I thought a couple of the Jamaican distilleries. Were there was no some. Active. There was some discussion. I think Clarendon. Um, there, are some distilleries weren't as active then reared back up. And, yeah. And it, there's it's a few. There's been a few spots in the Caribbean that that's happened with, especially with the explosion of. Um, Barrel-aged spirits, oh, period, yeah. you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. I hate to dump this, but... <laughs> There's a yeah. lot here. There's a lot on the table. <laughs> yeah. So, let me set that water. Well, I feel completely inadequate with what I brought. <laughs> no, you brought... <laughs> no, 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 no. This, bl- this plans, I think, is fantastic. Yeah, that plans It really tastes good. nothing like current plans. Even yeah. the Jack, I like it. Yeah, it's that Jack different. is way different tasting. Um, I enjoyed that. It's kind of cool how... <laughs> I got it too. Mm, so. mm, I hope that water is. I'm pretty sure that water is my water. From last time we were in here, we did. Well, we'll just assume it is, and I'll put my paranoia to rest. It's fine. You guys want to try that rumble cask? Yeah. Yes. All right, Jack. I got a cough. Sorry. <coughs> oh, baby, that felt good. I am pretty sure I gave myself the black lung. Yeah. All right. So we've got. <coughs> this is barrel number four. Barrel number four is the uh, standard rumble cask reserve. Uh, you're looking at 69.2% ABV. So this is Whoa. nearly hazmat. Holy cow. This is a, and we're going to, it'll probably be a little lower proof by the time it gets bottled. Oh, listen to that. Oh, yeah. Everybody loves a bottle opening. <laughs> the bottle opening. <laughs> Hand me that water. We're probably going to drop the proof on this a little bit. Take the edge off. But so the fascination with pre. Alan Richards, who went up there with us, he brought up a pre-Chip Tate era bottling of Rumble. I had one of those for a while. And I love Balconies, and they've come a long way, but it was extremely underwhelming compared to these. Compared to the regular current release of, of Rumble. And for those who don't know, <clears throat> Rumble Cask Reserve, as Balconies probably, no, I know for sure, is the most expensive spirit they make. It's a distil- distilled spirit specialty made from honey, figs, and turbinado sugar. Uh, figs being the most expensive ingredient possible. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Uh, so it's not quite rum, it's not quite whiskey, and it's definitely not quite brandy. Uh, and it is, uh, I think it's the best thing they make. It's it's tremendous. Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites. But, it's such a unique thing. I mean, I wonder why they decided to make yeah. something like that. Did they say <laughs> when they were there? And they even dropped the price on it, knowing that it's expensive it is. They don't make normal margins on this. Yeah. The standard price for the Roma Cash Reserve is usually about 60, is now 69 bucks. And uh, they used to be 75, 80, saw them up as high as 90. Um, what was your question? I was just saying, how, how do they come up with that concept? I mean, that's kind of a unique <clears throat> thing. Like I get the turbinado sugar if you're making rum and Honey's kind of interesting. I mean, there's mead and stuff like mm-hmm. that, but I never would have thought to figs. distill it. To and distill then it figs. Yeah. I mean, that, what a weird and interesting fruit to go use. I'm not sure, but that is fantastic. Yeah, that is really, really that good. Is, um, I don't get the fig as much on this as I do with the standard. It, so it comes – I get it on the <clears> nose. They had uh, mm-hmm. an extra shipment of figs that they had made some fig brandy with that was just the figs, no turbine or sugar or honey. And you, you can isolate that. You can you know deconstruct the rumble to separate – that fig note definitely comes off more like a brandy from mm-hmm. Copper and Kings, which mm-hmm. you know we're big fans of. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, hmm. They do it so well, and it's it's you know it's my favorite thing they make. They also their regular uh, like True Blue or whatever they ended up dropping the price on that as well, right? They've dropped prices on yeah, everything, which is impressive for. They are they're at the forefront. I know it goes back and forth, and, and I I want to I'm going to say something that might come off a little crappy. But I just want to point it out because it's worth pointing out. The biggest, one of the biggest complaints people have when they talk about Texas whiskey is the price. Oh, totally. <clears throat> price in comparison to age and that sort of thing. Yep. So, um, Balcones has been at the forefront of, I would say, this movement in Texas for a while now. 
it's arguing who made it first, Garrison or them. I think I forget one had their license first, one was distilling first. I don't really remember. Yeah, it's not important. Like the, p- the point is, is that they are the forefront of also bringing that price down. Mm-hmm. They doubled distillation <laughs> capacity twice in the past three years, and they have dropped what was a forty dollars bottle now to the just right at thirty dollars. Making I, it more I think comparable. It's, I think we expect that to happen. It's the same with you Kentucky. It it's the same with new Kentucky distilleries. Right. They're they're raising capital. They need to sell a bunch of vodka and and you know Gin. things like that. Yeah. Yep. Um, until they have the money or source product, get bigger, or yeah. more successful, and then you would hope that it would drop. You would hope. Oftentimes, no one's making that conscious decision. Yeah. And uh, look, I know that they're a sponsor of the show, but they they. I've I've been saying long before they were a sponsor that I really appreciated the idea of someone saying look we can make this more approachable mm-hmm. and focus on other things if they you know new projects new ideas they they're coming out with something soon called the I'm not Spanish but I'm I'll say juntos with a j that's and it's right. tequila barrels so I'm going to make it a Spanish mm-hmm. accent juntos jun- tequila j- juntos yeah. doesn't quite sound the same no i think it's juntos the juntos J's <laughs> juntos yeah there you go <laughs> but uh you know they're working on trying new things yeah, they do have. They probably have the more diverse range of products. I think. For oh, for sure. Well, and they've Texas also stuff. sort of focused a lot on the on the single malts, right? Yeah. That that was their their um, I wouldn't say their flag their flagship was Baby Blue, I believe. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's Man, definitely that been good. their focus. Wow. So this, uh, I think we're going to see a drop in proof. This is the oh, that is the oldest thing they've ever released. That is Chip Tate era. Uh, seven years. This. Is a, almost ten percent ABV drop. X Oloroso Sherry. Um, I'm all about that. I want yeah. to try some of that. Full, I uh, believe full maturation in X Oloroso. I could be wrong, but a sixty percent ABV instead of a sixty nine percent. I don't think that the other one really drank at seventy. I don't think so either. I was. I didn't. I enjoyed that. But I mean, I'm sure course, a little water might do it good. Yeah. Before it's bottled, but um, right there. I thought it was fine like that. I mean, of course we basically been working through all cask yeah. strength stuff. Yeah, so yeah. maybe if the first if that's the first time yeah, this knows that it. was the first drink. I have an idea for a drinking game <clears throat> which we kind of talked about earlier. Did you get some questions to I ask? I got some. So during the Brendan Shaw episode a few episodes back, which I'll I'll explain what Holy this is no. and then we'll cut to commercial. I had an idea <clears throat> for those of you who are Joe Rogan fans, it would be so fun to get someone in here like uh, Ari Shafir, Burke Kreischer or, or Brendan Schaub and play a game of truth or dare slash whiskey roulette. And I'd ask a question, and it would be a very aggressive question. And if he could either answer it or take a drink, and then he would pick blind, and the drink could either be something delicious or something disgusting like Malort. I figured we could probably do an augmented version of that for today, and we'll start in the next segment. So if it doesn't work, we can cut it out. <laughs> but... uh <laughs> To give you an example for the question, the question to Brandon, one of the first questions was, is that Joe Rogan has brought to light a lot of great comedians who have gone on to become famous, but because Rogan brought them on a show, pumped them up, they became, they got the spotlight they deserved and became really, really famous. I mean, that goes without saying with Tom Segura, Joey Diaz, Burt Kreischer. I was going to ask Brennan Schaub to name a comedian that's become famous because of Joe Rogan, but he doesn't think deserves it and is not funny at all. And there's just no way he's going to answer <laughs> no that. No way. So he would take a drink. That was the goal. So when we come back, you've got a series of questions. We'll test it out and go from there. All right? Awesome. Sounds good. Cheers. Yeah. So essentially, uh, you've got some questions you guys worked on. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we wish we had more time. Well, I, th- it, I think we have some. It hit me last yeah. minute. Yeah. So uh, you ask, and either I'll answer, and we can have a discussion about it, or I'll drink. Uh, I'm hoping that this is not nearly as brutal as I'm expecting it to be. It Ma- probably Mike, you be. set the tone. All right. Well, I don't have... Do you have one? I have some pretty <laughs> tame ones, but we'll go. So... So what guest would you never have on again? Oh, yeah, for sure. We can do this. All okay, right. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I I haven't had a bad experience with um, a publicist before, and I don't know how they're going to 
Like, I don't know if they'll see this and then, like, oh, this guy talks trash about guests. We won't mm. have celebrities back on. I loved, as a kid, I loved Aries Spears. But the most f- negative feedback we got in was an episode, episode was Aries Spears. Yeah. He was extremely political. We tried to avoid the conversation. I really liked, and I would definitely have on uh, his opener, his feature act, his partner on his podcast. Uh, but, yeah, Steinberg, yeah. Uh, but that episode was rough, man. Mm. I, I think I listened. I don't remember it that much, though. But A lot of negative feedback. Okay. A lot of uh, messages, texts. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Just, oh. you know, tried to move around some things a little bit. But yeah. I, I, I would, probably wouldn't invite Aries back on okay. now. So, yeah, it was easy enough. Yeah. I'm going to have a drink in celebration. Bad. I, I wasn't had the bad. balls to say something. All right. I'll start semi, semi easy. Um, semi soft, yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> semi soft. Yeah. Uh, what is what was the worst HBS pick ever done? Oh. <laughs> I can't believe we are having this discussion. So my opinion or yours, your uh, opinion. or the the zeitgeist opinion or both, so. both. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I know coughing into the microphone. I've had to apologize for several picks, and I'll tell you what they were. So when I don't pick for the group, but there was one time I was forced to pick with a group, and that was because of a hurricane. Um, when, And this is something I think is fair to talk about, and it, it might come off to some as making an excuse, but I'm, I'm very transparent. I try to be very open-minded. So uh, the very first thing we ever had to apologize for that uh, we caught some flack on that I think might be arguably, uh, well, no, I, the MB Roland pick was probably more hated mm. uh, if you're not I used to the one. young profile. Yeah. But the the F Harvey pick we did with Russell's Reserve, mm. I love Wild Turkey. I have no complaints of Wild Turkey, but we had never a stat. We don't have an stat. We didn't at the time have an established relationship with them. And when you fly out to a distillery, you spend all day with their master distiller, you chase through ten barrels, and you don't buy anything, and you've never bought anything then uh, you, you oh, burn you're a bridge. pretty much done, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so we uh, we tasted through eight barrels. And, and this was on site then. This was in samples. On site with Eddie Russell, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> we, we tasted through a barrel. Uh, we tasted through eight barrels, and we liked the eight the most. Um, but that was the one that we, that we probably caught the most. Yeah. Um, that Between that and the MB Roland one, so... Uh, and, I, and I think most most people understand this, but but you, it's only the pick's only as good as what you're given. Right. Sure. You, you, your goal is to pick the best of the batch. Yeah. Well, there's but this that, old that men- doesn't mean that it's going to be anything good. That's there, right. There's this old mentality that, uh, and and as some people saw on last week's episode, where Mike Raymond in the last ten minutes had mentioned that uh, he, he what he gets access to is different than what sure. people get access to. I, we caught some feedback about that. Some people didn't agree. In most cases, <clears throat> in most cases, you do, you know, a lot of people don't right. have this special access to things. Right. You're picking from leftovers of other people's picks, right. uh, which doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. But, like, when you go to the distillery, to the warehouse at Campari at Wild Turkey, as soon as you walk in the warehouse, there's there's a against the wall, in the walkway, is probably 40 barrels that they had already rolled off for people to taste. And people... And people passed on it. Mm-hmm. So those are picking people's rejects. Yeah. <clears throat> in other cases, you're they may roll something fresh off the rack for you. They they rolled we t- we tried four rejects, which were other people's rejects. Then they rolled off four new barrels straight off the rick that no one had ever tasted, except for the people who who set them in that warehouse for picks. Yeah. Uh, and we picked the last one of that. So, and so what's interesting is you said you caught some feedback about that, but when I think back to when we were barrel craft spirits last December, I mean, we basically got to pick whatever. Mm-hmm. That's correct. There. Yeah, so, so you could say that we got special access. We, we whatever, absolutely had right? special access. Yeah. We were the first right. civilians yeah. besides distributing partners and stuff. We were the first civilians ever to come to the barrel facility. And because it went so well, they now have it open to the public. They, they, oh, will, nice. they bring barrel that's picking awesome. crews in all the time. And that started with us. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. But <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, so I, when he said that, I was like, I mean, I was thinking back to our experience. I was like, that's basically what... We got so. right, but most established yeah, barrel sure. programs, sure, Buffalo Trace, yeah. Wild Turkey, um, you know, and there's and there's even going to be people who listen to this that, that kind of scoff it off and be like, oh well, Chris is just saying that because he doesn't have no. I I I know I'm 
I don't speak on things I don't right. know what I'm talking about. I try to. My wife will tell me I'm wrong all the time, but what does she know? She's the worst. Uh, but but I speaking of your wife, the next question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that the which one is that? Is that another there question? Are several. Okay. All right. I'm I'm ready to do this. I haven't drank once out of requirement. Well, I was trying to start slow. <laughs> Just, <laughs> all right. Blow past we'll, that we'll, one. We'll go like at the beginner's level. On, on family stuff. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, rate, rate your wife's cooking skills on a scale of one to ten. <laughs> oh, that's an easy one. Yeah, my wife I is guess an I incredible start easy. cook. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, if that's where you're starting, I hate to see where you're going. <laughs> my wife is an exceptional cook, and I can cook meat on a grill. Yeah. And even then, sometimes there's No, some I've issues. seen some of the stuff she's cooked in recipes. It does look yeah. pretty good. My yeah. wife is an incredible cook. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> He's, he goes from that like a really nice softball to like yeah. <laughs> what's your wife's favorite position <laughs> just uh, something really yeah, appropriate no, rate your hey, wife listen, and... I, don't, I don't want to lose a sponsor <laughs> yeah, yeah, or yeah. a wife so let's <laughs> alright now let's go back to Mike then <laughs> oh man uh, I have kind of a messed up one but I, I don't think I'm, I'm going to do it oh, just so. ask just oh. ask we'll right. cut it out if we need to so, so you know you, <laughs> you have four kids right no, I don't like where this is going <clears throat> Be oh, honest. Okay. Which one is your favorite? Uh, I, I, I can honestly say this. I don't have a favorite. There are times that I, uh, as a father, as most parents can yeah. attest, there are times where certain <laughs> ones like really steal uh, your heart. Yeah. Like my son right now is in this phase where he crawls into bed every night and he that's the only time we get cuddles. Yeah, Because yeah, during yeah. the day he's like, I don't want to cuddle. I right. want to go play in the dirt in a dress. Uh, <laughs> it, and it, so there's these phases that they go through where they're really where you might be more infatuated with one over the other but the, but there's you know and yeah. I can tell you having teenagers that can be a bit of a yeah. nightmare as well it's not quite where I was going I don't have a favorite yeah, I, yeah. I can honestly say I don't yeah. have a favorite and if I did I would 100% yeah, say it on there I don't give a crap it, yeah. what are they gonna they're not gonna watch yeah, that's this that's true that's true yeah <laughs> yeah how, 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 how bad do your <clears throat> questions get uh, I mean, you, I guess you could just remove questions that I asked. Sure, we can cut it out. You yeah. don't like. Um, Pay attention, Jack. The, I don't think this is that bad. Okay. Um, marry one, kill one, F one. <laughs> I have several of yeah. these. <laughs> these are great. Mary, F, Mary, kill? F, yeah. Yeah, kill. Yeah. yeah. Mike, me, and Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> well, okay, I know the answer to this. <laughs> Well, 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 you were just you were just complimenting Jack on his haircut yeah, and how, how, right, how thin he looks. So, I, so looks, I, yeah. I I immediately know the answer to this. I immediately because uh, I and I and I've got a sound logical idea to this, right? So uh, one, I'm effing you. <laughs> so you are. Uh, he's got I'm money. Not ask he's why. young. He's fun. He's humorous. Nothing's off what limits. Is the, you're not going to get money just for, uh, with one night. Well, That's you don't right. know what I got going for me, buddy. <laughs> you don't know what I could do to you. <laughs> God. So. so uh, or something. So yeah, yeah. Let, let's add another drink here. So I, I'm killing Jack, and I'll tell you why. Oh man, I like the Family Man and Mike, and we politically agree almost on everything. In fact, I can't think of one thing we don't agree on except for Columbus Day. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, you gave some, I, I you did, gave a little leeway. I'm, I'm willing to be. Yeah, Columbus was a piece of crap. But so, you, you both have beards, so who's taking the lead? Oh man, and Andy works for NASA, <laughs> and. Todd probably makes more money. Todd's more fun. Uh, first of all, he does. Yeah. Secondly, uh, his meme game is on point. That's like, true. Everything about you screams a good time, but I don't want you long term. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jack, makes we sense. can't drink together. I got to kill you, buddy. Fair. That, that's fair. But I love you, Jack, and I couldn't do the show without you. Uh, you want to open this Negrita? Yeah, let's do that. So, so I, I, Let's open the racist rum. It's <laughs> yeah, This German racist yeah. rum. So I had this idea. That's a good lead into my next question. <laughs> oh, 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 man. God. Oh, God. Oh, no. oh, God. I had this idea for this rum, uh, a, a vintage rum tasting with Richard Seal and Luca Gargano, but we're, we're not going to be able to pull it off, so I might as well open this. Yeah. This is a 1970s high-proof rum, so I have no idea what to expect from it. Product of France, bottled for Germany. Looks good. Oh, wow. It's a crazy bottle. All right, what's your next question? <laughs> I think this is going to be good. The rum. I, his question probably will be too. But what's your rum. favorite ethnicity? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I don't have a favorite ethnicity. I have, I have a favorite. I mean, I, I have... 
a this favorite. Ch- a f- I have a more favorite child than I have a favorite ethnicity. Well, there you go. Oh, this smells awful. I think it what? smells no. good. I'm getting that ham. It smells. Ham, it like does. It. I'm getting, a, a I'm getting that, that. that Haitian. I wouldn't be surprised like if there was probably some, Haitian, if there was yeah. some Haitian distillery in this. But it's in, it doesn't taste like it. It's though. in Germany, so I can't really I like read the it. Nose in this. In item stum. I can see. I know a little bit of German, but, but I don't think I can read that. Uh, I wonder if it's distilled. It's distilled in France, right? It's got to be distilled in France. Or well, it says a product of France. I'm getting some of that dis. like olive juice. Flowery. It's an olive juice, black olive. A little bit. Mm. It doesn't not, taste like. I'm that, not getting though. that in a negative way, though. <laughs> it reminds me of the Hamilton, the Hamilton pot still black a little bit. That is awful. You don't like it? I kind of like it. I kind of like it. The finish, I dig it. the finish is better. The nose and the initial taste is cold. If you don't like the nose, olive it's not juice. Going yeah. good. Like you know when you open a can of yeah, black yeah, yeah. olives no, and that. black watery olive juice it's comes kinda out. Kind of savory. Smelling. I can see that, but I, I hate olives. But I'm not. <laughs> that it's is. Not, it's not negative for me. Okay, so I can't get past the nose, but the taste is not so bad on the finish, like after you swallow. Hmm. This bottles. I don't have a favorite of Okay. I will tell you that it it does bother Top me. Top three. <laughs> <laughs> Top three. I can narrow it down to ones I don't like. Right. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, I really you don't. don't, I don't do I'm that. just kidding. I we don't, don't want to hashtag cancel whiskey need. I don't. Oh God, like no. Some of the jokes we've already made have been cancel worthy. I'm losing a sponsor for sure. Mm-hmm. Least favorite store owner. That's why, that's why we make them pay it, pay in advance. Ooh, I had I actually had a similar question. Least favorite store owner in Houston. That should be or easy period? because not all of them. You don't work with all of them uh, in Houston. I have one. There's one that we hear about a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sure is. Are you talking about the same one I am? Maybe. I don't know. The the one that's hated the most in Houston that I think is a garbage person. And a garbage store is Sonny's. Yeah, that's mm. the one. Yeah. Sonny's liquor. Yeah, Sonny's is a garbage establishment that deserves no one's business. This and is it the guy bums that screams at people so, when you don't buy. W- yep. If you spend too much time in a store, or if Get you're out. if you're texting on your phone while you're in, he wants you in and out. Yeah, interesting. And he's not race specific. It's anyone who. Yeah, anyone. Yeah. It's uh that store is a stain on the whiskey scene on on the alcohol liquor scene in Houston. What's the dumbest question someone's asked you on the show, or or the dumbest thing someone has said on the show that you felt uncomfortable correcting? So them? one oh. thing we had to censor out early on. I think it was episode four. Uh, I love I love Evans Tabor. Jack already knows what the moment I'm talking about. Hmm. Uh, and I actually ran into that girl. Um, <laughs> I ran into her a couple weeks ago at Whiskeys of the World. She was there. Uh, but we were drinking at this table. We were talking about how great the empty glass smelled. And at the tail end of the episode, oh, no. there's a cold, there's a hard cut. And all of a sudden, you like if you're watching the video, you see a hard cut. All of a sudden, we're, awkward, we're nervously laughing. And Caleb Kilburn from Peerless is definitely visually <laughs> uh, like disturbed. Disturbed. <laughs> And there was a joke or a comment made that was definitely not meant for uh, for uh, a mixed company that we we laughed and we cut out. And when I went to Whiskeys of the World a couple weeks ago, I ran into her and we laughed about it. Uh, and uh, it, it Evans couldn't be a nicer guy. He, he definitely didn't do anything wrong. He just his comment was yeah. There's yeah. Uh, it was was a we were like I don't know if we we're allowed to say this on the radio. Right. So, right, right. But it was. Uh, I mean, he couldn't. He couldn't be a. a I look up to him in a lot. It can't of ways. be much worse than any of these questions that we have that we're not going to ask. Sure. <laughs> well, along those lines, honest thoughts on whiskeys of the world event. Ooh, that's a tough question as well. <laughs> so, I really like Doug. I've never openly said this. Hmm. Uh, I've, I've. Am I going to do this? Do I want to do this? Uh-huh. Mark it just in case. I thought the food was great. So uh, in the past, uh, the event that I – the first event I ever fell in love with in Texas was Whiskey of the yeah. World. It has been a hard road the last couple of years for really? that event. Um, they've changed formats a little bit. They ran into a couple of hiccups. I think there's been more put on his plate in running the event. I do love Doug. I do love the event. Uh, but it has – there's been a lot of troubles uh, that have caused some issues that this year, by the way, was a complete reprieve. Is that the right word? Mm-hmm. A complete 180 from the last two years. 
Last two years have been an upper <coughs> battle mm-hmm. with some issues. This year, the Houston event was absolutely uh, – they did a great job. I, I love the and event. And that was with the reschedule. And the, with the reschedule, yeah. with the yeah. with the weather, uh, the food was fantastic. The food was really good. I enjoyed they, it. We had a great time. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of Texas – stuff there too which was uh kind of impressive absolutely absolutely they uh they've, they've come a long way um i don't know i'm hearing rumors that they're going to change up which cities they visit next year i don't know the exact mm. um story but is that a more of a national yeah so it's not just Texas? i believe doug bought it 20 something years ago and sold the event to iwsc which is an international group that does these events okay and uh they do a fantastic job nationwide. They've got a couple of great events, one in Atlanta, one in, I think, the Bay Area in California. They see like 2,000 people. I mean, they, they do a great job. Texas, our laws are weird. The format's right. weird. I remember it you guys a lot. about yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of unbeknownst. To, I mean, we struggle with our event. Our yeah. Whiskey Social is not perfect, and we, we really strive to make – sure that the love and care comes through that's why i personally bring bottles from my own collection and start pouring vintage stuff right just i want people to walk away and say holy shit i did not know that you that i could go to an event and that this would be there or that right. would be there i mean this year the great jared hempstead from balconies gave me a bottle of the goik smash that mm. bottle of four roses goes for like 400 and something on secondary it's one of the oh, wow. early tater sticker bottles yeah of 2014 i think it was 2014 uh, and we're going to pour it at the event. Nice. nice. Pour it free, you know? Yeah. So. Oh, this oof. is super interesting. The tequila one? Bit. Yeah, the nose. It's, it tastes like ginger ale to me. So, not knowing this is tequila at first, I was caught off guard. Lots of black pepper on the back end. Tons of tequila influence. Mm-hmm. When I found out it was tequila, I honed in on that. And if you love agave, this is... A wild ride. Yeah. Of, I mean, it is such a front end. It's all that sweet, sweet. rum. Mm-hmm. And then on the back end, it's all white pepper. Yep. Tequila, and then you get agave. that agave vegetal note in there. And It's it's such a blend that, like, you could say that you could tell someone that this was a tequila that was aged in a, a single malt sure. or something, you yeah. know. And, and I don't know that you would be able to yeah, tell. Yeah, tell the it's difference. It's heavy. Yeah. I mean, it's a heavy influence. I mean, it's it's it, a heavy tequila note. Yeah. And uh, we we had such a fun time picking these out that we uh, we wanted to do one of it's the only sherry they're gonna I know that someone say whiskey and the great guys at Randall Randall Sullivan uh, what they're doing up in the North Texas they're gonna be doing a rumble pick as well um, and he's been asking for years man that guy is a go getter um, I call him uh, a. <laughs> To me, I didn't realize how big he was until I saw him in person. I did his show. I was like a, a guest. The dude's a gorilla. I mean, he's he's a little shorter than me. Great hair like Johnny Bravo, right? I mean, if you, for Halloween, if you wanted to go as like a a 40-year-old Johnny Bravo, right? He's got that him. look, you know? Uh, and I called him, uh, I think, what what I call him? My albino, uh, oh, vanilla gorilla. Vanilla gorilla. <laughs> yeah, he's just this, this I mean, he's shaped guy is stout but he he's been begging for a rumble cask for a long time they're doing that pick this week and then uh i'm excited we'll, we'll be trading yeah with some texas groups yeah that's fun i like this yeah it's it's definitely if you're a fan of agave i feel like i'd put this with my Texas with my tequila i would yeah, yeah. it's very tequila forward mm-hmm. on the like in that mid palate to the finish for sure. And uh, to me, like the whole combination of flavors is like candy ginger to me. Sure. You get the sweet up front and the vegetal kind of stuff <laughs> and the white pepper. Is this our end. last segment or third? Okay. It's our last. So I'm going to ask a question. Oh, okay. <clears throat> What's the, here it goes. You ready? Yeah. What's the hardest part about a mixed race ma- marriage? Oh, wow. That's an interesting question. Yeah. Uh, I was trying like, w- try to think of something that wasn't necessarily incendiary, but is I- in depth. So I, I've seen Jessica online, and you guys seem very, very, very much on the same page we politically. Are. Yeah. And I've seen her tell people to calm down. Yeah. Like, like hey, relax. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and your wife is African-American. That's Does she right. prefer black or African-American? I don't What's think she the, cares, really. She doesn't care? Yeah. What's the hardest part or the hardest thing that you've had to face marrying someone and, or her? If you notice yeah. it's something that she's dealt with. 
Because I, I know that she doesn't care, and I know that you don't yeah. care, but there's always out external factors. Uh, you know, I it, I don't think we've had to deal with a whole lot. I mean, you know, it's always a little awkward at first with your family, just trying to feel each other out or whatever. That's, you know, when you're – no one really expects, you know, your family doesn't knows how to react. expect or anything. like. So you don't really know how to react. But, I mean, no, I think – So this is your first mixed race relationship? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think now turn, the he harder he hasn't turned back. Yeah, and no, I haven't turned back. That's right. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> uh, no, I think the hardest thing now is having a kid, and w- with all the identity crap today, and, and and you really, I started to really think about like it's all such bull crap, right? Like when this when he has to check a box on a form if he's white. Or African American for kids, it's almost like other. I don't understand why it do doesn't I, why even I being matter. Asked to do and, this? and it's so. What's funny too is we did the ancestry genetic thing or whatever. So I'm 100 percent like Eastern European. I know I could see it. Yeah, 100 <laughs> percent. And and Jessica is like 25 uh, percent or 30 percent like Irish and Scottish, and then whatever the rest of it is, sure. you know, West African or whatever. So like our kid is like basically 60 percent sure white, mm. right? But I'm like, but why does it matter? Yeah. He's that's who he is. Like, he's a, his own person. Sure. Why do you have to identify with one group or another? So I think that's the hardest part is we've gotten – I see what's going on with all the identity politics. I don't really want to get into all the sure. all that crap. Neither do pe- I. People get into so much <laughs> trouble with it these days. But it's just – you look at that, it's like it shouldn't. he shouldn't have to care. He should just live his life how he – you know, as yeah. himself as opposed it's to – identi- because of racism, yeah, really. Identifying it's with it's so we can track yeah. racism. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that's – I think that's going to be the hardest part is dealing with that. But for the most part, I mean, uh, you know, I, I always say I live in a deeply red state and I've never really – no one cares here. Everyone sure. mm-hmm. is great. Um, yeah, every once in a while there's a, a, a comment from – and it's, honestly, it's been more from from black people calling my wife a traitor that happened when we were in Washington, <laughs> sure. D.C. one time. Uh, and we're just like, yeah, whatever. You yeah, know, yeah. You're, an, you're a moron. We'll just go about our lives. We don't let it bother us. That's the other thing is um, – just don't let it bother you. Sure. Like you choose to be offended by something, right? So if someone says something ugly to you, why why let it bother you? They're right. the one that's they're the one that's obviously wrong. Don't let I it I think it's gotta be worse when it happens to your, your kid. Life. And that's oh, yeah, that's, that's the, the thing. part that's, that's that the kills thing me. Yeah. Is, you know, kids don't to have to that, no. right? the fact that kids they, have they to understand. deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's I, a good question. I have a, a aggressive question for you. Uh, your wife makes a lot more money than you. Why does? Why are you less of a man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to have a sugar mama. <laughs> happy to have a sugar mama. It's, uh, it's okay. I just I, I, what, I was like, what's the most effed up thing I could say? To, I, to I talk? knew that was going to be the so question. So technically, my wife makes so, more money than me too. <laughs> but is there is there another question that you did and you decided it was too tough, too I mean, rough? Uh, I mean, I could I, just run through. Just, I'll just read them. No, I definitely don't want you doing that. So <laughs> if you don't think you can read on air, just show no, it to me. No, it's nothing that bad. Just show it to I me. I mean, off. it's nothing that horrible. You can read them. Okay, I'm yeah. reading it right now. Uh, you guys talk while fill dead air. Hold on. Have no, you had wait. this? <laughs> I think I tried that at Rosewater. Yeah, so you did F. Mary kill my wife's sisters? Yeah. Does <laughs> <laughs> so she have three that sisters? That should be the easiest <laughs> question. <laughs> Well, it has five sisters. I could kill four. There you of them. go. Perfect. Go, That's yeah. an even better question. Um, <clears throat> I'm just kidding. I love all of them. Uh, marry one, kill one. Uh, Jack Mikey. Okay. Have you ever thought of? Oh, <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't read some of these on air. <laughs> um, this That's horrible. So did you know that that's MGP? Oh, 20, really? 25, 25 year. 25 year MGP. And there's there's a finish on it, and I forget exactly what it is. I'm trying to remember if I had this one or the New Year one at Rosewater. Mind if I... No, go ahead. It's already open. Oh, it doesn't look like okay. it, but it is. Yeah, it didn't look like it at all. Is there any oh, okay. water Okay, yeah, I'm glad we avoided some of these. Is there any these. water left? Uh, there is a little water left. Um, I'm happy to answer all of them... <laughs> Later. Uh, <laughs> off off oh. air. Yeah, I'd answer all of these. Except the marry one, kill one, F one of my wife's sisters. <laughs> Although my wife, uh, her, her immediately oldest sister, Katie... We ob- we refer to each other as um, um, what's asexual partners for life. Oh, <laughs> like we're not physically attracted to each other, but we associate the most in personality. And like when she's fighting with her husband, they fight the way that me and my wife fight. Like my wife and and my brother in law Sean, they're the ones that are standoffish and will give each other the silent treatment. 
and me and Katie are the ones who are wanting to talk through things. So we've we've often said that we missed each other, and pa- like jokingly, this would be my wife, except you know, obviously, my wife is a is is a saint, and uh, if she ever leaves me, I would kill her and all of our kids just so they could never leave me. I may lose a lot of credibility slash, but it could be just because of all the other stuff I taste. This on it, that tastes more like that tastes like George Dickel distill it to me. The, the rum? No, this. this. I, I definitely detect it in there, but I was told what that is it's this? MGP finished It in, says distilled in, in the oh, Madeira. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's this finished is, in Madeira. Yeah. Interesting. So they actually did a couple things with this. This 25-year-old, I think, in my opinion, uh, for the $250 price tag, this was the thing that wasn't talked about enough. People love I the agree. four square 15-year. Um, <clears throat> but this 25-year-old, they did a bunch of weird things to it. And it wasn't just Madeira. There's a, I think there was like six different barrels involved or some, yeah, some crazy say, I, number. I wonder if they, because it's, I don't believe that it was aged 25 years in Indiana. I'm yeah. sure they took it. And I, I wonder if this sat sure. in a second fill Dickel. <coughs> Could have. And picked up. I've tasted. And then that after that, went note. into, you know, picked up a lot of that Dickel. Yeah. I, I get, I get that as well. Yeah. It's super That's subtle, weird. but I, I feel the same way. I'm taking some of this plant. But it's yeah, awesome stuff it. though. I know That's we're really good. Really like we're quickly running out of time and Jack's giving me the finger. Um, but <coughs> I gotta try this plant. Yeah. All right, awesome. if we gotta trim the episode, we'll find the boring parts and cut it out. <laughs> Ugh, having trouble. So, so it's crazy going from a couple of years ago. I think they, there was a charity auction, and I actually got this bottle from Pasha. Sure. And uh, when I was, you could see it, it's actually kind of dinged up a little bit. Sure. It came in this box, and he handed me the box. And what I thought was the body of the box is actually the lid of the box because the box had like it was really long and that was the lid. And I grabbed sure. it. The whole bottle fell and on didn't break. concrete. <laughs> oh, wow. It hit the concrete on that corner survived. and bounced and survived. And we were both standing there. These old Blantons have a bubble gum, shock. a bubble gum note. Interesting. There's like a, 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 bright, uh, a bright note. That's... I haven't had that in a while. I, I usually bust it out with when... It reminds People me a little bit of the old Sissel Weller stuff. It yeah. It has a little bit of that sure. flavor. All right. This is 91 Blanton's. Mm-hmm. Yep, 1991. Yep. We've got to go. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, this kind of flew by. It did. Uh, you guys are fantastic. And, uh, yeah, let's, let's answer these questions. Yeah. Off air. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Balcony's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along. When you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more.